I also wanted to give a connection of like what happens when your forebrain is damaged. So there was a case study with a man named Phineas Gage. He was a railroad worker who had a 43 inch long rod lodged through his frontal lobe. As you can see in the diagram to the right, it's kind of like a diagram of how the rod was in his head. It's a little bit uh, crazy graphic, but um, that's how it happened. Um, and the main thing from, I guess the main effect from having this long rod lodged through his frontal lobe is that his personality drastically changed. He just became more bitter and aggressive. And this is likely due to it, the lobe, I mean, not the lobe, the rod passing through his um, hypothalamus area and not allowing him to kind of regulate his emotions as he would have before when everything was normal. Okay, so that's one case of damage to the forebrain. And the second case that I wanted to bring up here is patient Tan. So the reason that he's called patient Tan is because he lost the ability to speak and could only say Tan. Um, and so what happened was a researcher named Broca discovered a damage to a particular place in the left frontal lobe, which um, is now called the Broca's area because this uh, researcher discovered it and it's responsible for, you know, being able to speak. And so because it was damaged, because the Broca's area was damaged, that's why patient Tan could not speak at all. And Broca's area and Wernicke's area are definitely um, topics or concepts that the MCAT psych social section likes to test pretty often. So you guys should just remember the differences between the two. Um, and then we are also going to connect the forebrain to mental disorders associated with the forebrain. So um, the first one is depression. So this is uh, usually seen by abnormal activity in the frontal lobe and the limbic structures. You know, some common, I guess, some common symptoms of depression are the feeling of hopelessness, loss of interest um, from activities. And so depression is actually due to the abnormal activity in the frontal lobe. Good to know. And apply the, um, we really wanted to integrate the concepts with how it could apply to other conditions in this lecture, especially because that will help you guys with um, integrating the concepts a lot um, more easily, I think. And or remember the concepts a lot more easily by integrating the um, concepts together. And the second one is schizophrenia, which um, in those type of patients, you see a shrunken frontal and temporal lobe and symptoms of schizophrenia are hallucinations, delusions, disorganized speech or behavior and blunted emotions. Um, next, dementia is uh, also due to damage to the frontal and temporal lobes. And through this, symptoms are that behavior and personality changes, and occasionally there's also aphasia. Um, and then finally, there is Alzheimer's, which is a shrunken uh, due to a shrunken temporal lobe that spreads to the frontal and parietal lobe. And this causes symptoms of loss of cognitive functions, memory, and then basic activities of daily living once it gets really serious.